Well, hello everyone. Uh, we are here to discuss, uh, you know, Gold Derby's writers and editors to discuss the best television of 2014. Uh, now, we did one of these last year that I wasn't a part of, uh, so I'm here for the first time now. So, uh, you know, I, I say let's let's just get started. So, so who wants to start uh, naming their top ten shows of the year? Will you know? Give us the rundown, and then we'll discuss. Uh, uh, Charlie, how about you? Okay. Um, before I just get to my list, I mean, I had I was looking through, you know, some of my favorites, and there were some, you know, it pained me not to put on there, you know, shows like uh, Walking Dead, which had a resurgent season this year, um, Bob's Burgers, which is just a consistently funny show, The Americans, Brooklyn Nine Nine, Hannibal. It was tough to leave off this list, but um, unfortunately, uh, for my tastes, they had to. And uh, here is my uh, supreme, uh, my supreme list of what is great. Uh, number ten is Transparent. Number nine, The Mindy Project. Number eight, my always favorite Archer. Number seven, Veep. Number six, Silicon Valley. Such a, a great new show. Number five, The Normal Heart. Number four, Orange is the New Black. Number three, The Good Wife. Number two, Rick and Morty on Adult Swim. And the best program of 2014 was FX's Fargo. Now, interesting list. I, you know, I, I noticed on the bottom half of your list, it seemed to be all these uh, sort of um, these edgy, uh, you know, Comedies, the you know the the Archer, the Veep, the Transparent, the, these sorts of uh, uh, cutting edge uh, you know comedy shows, and then you went you know in a different direction. You have Good Wife and 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 uh, uh, um, uh, Fargo at the top. Yeah, I mean it was. I mean I I do like things that are that that just stand out as being different. And the thing that you know for me kept something like. Uh, Hannibal and or more like or more like you know Walking Dead or uh, Bob's Burgers and Brooklyn Nine Nine off the list is that they were consistent, but I didn't feel like you know these shows that actually made the list stepped up the game. You know, I mean Fargo just did something incredible that I have never seen done on television before. Excuse me, and uh, Good Wife has continuously stepped up in terms of how they deal with their plots and deal with characters. Um, you know, uh, uh, Veep took a really great turn with its uh, with its presidential campaign storyline, and that's what made these to me elevated these above the rest. Yeah, and when when I think about your taste, Charlie, in TV shows, you really do gravitate towards firstly all the Emmy caliber stuff that we all love, but you really champion these edgy animated series like Rick and Morty and especially Archer. Um, I was expecting Archer to be higher up on your list. And I know you also said Bob's Burgers is one of your honourable mentions, but um, what is it about that genre that you seem to love so much? Because you, you champion, it more, champion it more than anybody else at Gold Derby. I don't know what it is. I've just always had an affinity for cartoons. Uh, I think what I love most about uh, cartoon comedies, especially you know more adult themed cartoon comedies, is that you know you can do your normal sitcom stuff, but you can take it to another degree where you where you really suspend reality. So things that you know you may you may be thinking of in terms of logistics if you watch stuff on a normal live action sitcom, you're willing to let it go in a cartoon sitcom. Uh, you know, Archer did something amazing this year with their fifth with their uh, fifth season in terms of you know, going completely in a different direction and taking a huge risk in turning the whole season in this different direction uh, in uh, what they called Archer Vice since uh, they turned to a life of crime uh, to make their living. And it was, and it, and it worked, and it was fantastic. And Rick and Morty is just something where the gags from that are, to me, reminiscent of, you know, uh, the Simpsons in their prime, especially like reoccurring jokes where you just see them and you're just, especially with friends who you, uh, you know the show, you're just, you're just quoting stuff to each other, you know, you're saying, hey, I'm Mr. Beeseeks, look at me, you know, you're saying, you're, you're just doing that stuff to each other and it's just, it, I, I haven't seen anything like that in a long time. Hmm. Gotta say, I'm with Rob on that one, I was kind of shocked that uh, an animated program didn't take your number one slot there, but you can't argue with Fargo. But I for mm. sure thought, I was like, there's no way that he doesn't have Archer up there as number one. There's just no way. <laughs> and I was wrong. 
Well, now Archer's gotten their Emmy nomination, so so now I'm on my quest for Rick and Morty. So. Mm-hmm. Well, I you know fingers crossed about that. I I you know there are a couple of shows on your list that that definitely I I've mentioned before probably aren't aren't my cup of tea. You know the comedy of Archer doesn't quite do it for me. The comedy of Veep does it even less for me. Uh, you know it's it's just one of those things where I when uh when people hear or you know when I hear people talk about how great those shows are, I feel like I've watched a different show with like different writing and different characters or something like that. Uh, but definitely a few of the shows that are on your list, uh, I can't remember uh, if, you know, how many of them are on mine, but I know a couple of your honorable mentions, at least, uh, are, are on my list uh, somewhere, uh, potentially high, a couple of them. Uh, so, um, you, know, uh, you know, looking forward to that. So um, shall we do another top ten list? Or, yep. Uh, yep. Go. All right, let's, uh, Ralph, how about, uh, you're up. I'll, I'll, I'll go last so I can, I can just criticize all of yours and make mine. <laughs> My top ten, okay. Um, see, okay, I'm gonna preface by saying, top tens at the end of the year, you guys know, bug the hell out of me. Me too. Yeah. It's not, it's not a full season of anything. So it's, it's like, it's half of a season. It's like grading the first half of a test on the first page of a test, and you get all the answers right, and the second page, and you get all of them wrong. It, it makes it not a good show for the season. But we're grading, I guess, some shows on a half a season, so. Uh, Sounds like a bad dream that one keeps having. It's horrible. I, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan. But anyway, so my top ten... Tell us what your top ten is, please. <laughs> <laughs> I was just hopping off. Give me some damn time. <laughs> Thank God. Um, <laughs> number ten is I have Silicon Valley. Um, HBO. It's a, a, a great show. Um, and number nine, so here's where my, my soapbox thing came in, kicked in. I really enjoyed last last year, or last TV season, the, for the last half of the middle on ABC, I thought it was great. And I really, en- I didn't really enjoy it this first half of the season. But I really didn't really like the Goldbergs the last half of last TV season, and I really enjoy the Goldbergs this half of this TV season. So I have number nine, half of the middle, and half of the Goldbergs is my number nine. <laughs> um, at number eight, I have Jane the Virgin. Um, at number seven, I have Orange is the New Black. Number six, I have Game of Thrones. Uh, number five, I have Mom on CBS. Um, number four, I have House of Cards. Three, Hannibal. Two, I have Fargo. And number one, you guys should all know what my number one show is. Well, technically, my number one show would be College Football Saturdays, but I don't really think that counts <laughs> as reality. Mm-hmm. So... I digress, and my number one show is Shameless. Wow. Great list, Ralph. Hey, I, you, you I was surprised ahead, that, uh, I was surprised that uh, Orange of the New Black was seven. I thought you would have that up yeah. at like number two or uh, number two, number one, something like that. No, remember, we're talking about the show, not about Uzo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who's a very good point. List for, you know, his, his list of best That's people's performances yeah. would be Uzo and Duke. Uzo. Or Tatiana Maslany performances. Pretty much. <laughs> that's, pretty much. <laughs> that's pretty much what I got. I noticed something that's interesting easy. also on your uh, with your list. Uh, you had I think three or four network sitcoms in there. Yeah. And yeah. that's really interesting because a lot of people have been talking about how you know the idea you know the network sitcom just really being basically like an artifact at this point. I mean, I know Modern Family keeps on winning at the Emmys, but, you know, it's not exactly something that a lot of people are gravitating to. Yeah, um, I mean, I have, I know, have Mom talk- on there, and, and mainly because um, at number five, which I was shocked when I put it up there, I thought it'd be lower because I knew I was going to put it on my list, but um, the I don't know if you guys have watched it, but the topics that it actually tackles are are completely different than what um, a regular sitcom usually tackles. I mean, it, you're talking about teen pregnancy, about adoption, about um, domestic violence, all within just half a season of a show, and it's done so well. And it, it veers dramatic, but it still has those comedic elements, and the chemistry between Anna Ferris and Alice and Janney is ridiculous. So um, that's why I have it so high, and I was kind of shocked myself that I had it that high, but... Um, well, it's the beauty of, of Mom is that it's actually really funny, too. Um, it's laugh-out-loud funny. I hope the Emmys 
um, take notice of it more so. I mean, Alice in January was a shoe in but it really deserves more nominations. It's one of the best sitcoms on TV, period. It's very funny, and that's what I want to see more of. Funny comedy series would be lovely to, to see. So that's a really, really good call. I think it's also it's a promising sign for networks that you know they have that you know that not not that they would make it on a on your list, but you know that they would that there's something that we're not it's not we're not rolling our eyes at it. We're like you know those are pretty decent shows. I need to see several of them, but I think I think that's a, a great sign for networks that they're learning how to adapt in this new this new world of TV. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen um, I, one on here, I would press that I don't think many of you have seen. But if you haven't, I would really give Jane the Virgin a try. I was kind of shocked. I, I, when I, I first learned about it from a friend who um, was working with the showrunner, um, Jenny Ehrman, before on a past show, and she was like, you have to watch the show. It's really great. And then you see all the billboards and how it was one of the best-reviewed, I think the second best, if not the first best, um, new show of, of the fall season. So I was like, whatever, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I gave it a shot, and the pilot was great. And it really... It really just captures you because of, I think, because of its lead actress. She's completely, just, she's great in it. She has great comedic chops, and she has great dramatic chops, and she kind of pulls it all together and makes this ridiculous storyline about a virgin that gets pregnant um, kind of believable. And, and it's it's charming and, and everything else. I would, I mean, I, I would suggest you guys watch it um, if you haven't seen yeah. it already and just give it a shot. Yeah, that's I a show I've been needing to catch up on. Uh, you know, since, almost since it started airing, I haven't watched it yet, and that's you know, I'll I'll agree with you a little bit that trying to do a top ten list sort of in the middle of the television season, even though it's the calendar year, uh, is tough because these are shows that I would definitely be catching up on to gear up for the Emmys uh, in the spring, uh, but I haven't like caught up to all of them yet. So there are a couple of holes in my knowledge that I will be rectifying in the coming weeks or months. But uh, but yeah, Jane the Virgin. Rest assured, is on my list. Yeah, me too. I'm being. I think I'm now convinced after seeing what the Hollywood Foreign Press did with that show as well. I, I, I got to say, it's right at the top of my list. I, and you know, I also haven't seen things like The Nick. I've only seen one, one or two episodes and things like that. But Jane the Virgin has a lot of heat right now. And the reason why I didn't want to watch it is, firstly, the title turned me off, and secondly, it's on the CW. And generally, I don't watch things on the CW. They just don't appeal to me, to my demographic, generally. And um, and I've given some of them a try, like The Flash and Rain, and they just didn't appeal to me at all. And this one I'm going to give a shot because people keep telling me that it's really, really good. So good call on that one. So, um, you know, now we will find out, I guess, what is in, in Rob's demographic, which I guess is to find out what, what the nine runner-ups are going to be to The Good Wife. Or <laughs> <laughs> Well, what made me laugh Spoiler this morning alert. is when Ralph... <laughs> The usual, you know, uh, asshole that he is on an email is kidding, Ralph. That was said with love. But he said that I would just be good wife in nine spots in Hannibal. And you're pretty close, but I'll give you my... These are the ones that I couldn't squeeze onto the list. I mean, obviously, I do like Orange is the New Black, but it's not on my list. Because like Ralph said, for me, it's more about the performances than it is about the show. Um, I can live without seeing that, whereas my 10, I have to see desperately. Um, I also don't have Inside Amy Schumer, which I think is one of the funniest things on TV. Love her and love that show, but it's not on my list. Neither is Silicon Valley. I hated that show when it started, and I remember emailing all of you, telling you how crap it was, and by the end of it, I was just completely um, besotted with it. I thought it was hilarious, well-written. But it's not on my list. And neither is Episodes, which is one of my favorite comedies. Love that show. And also The Walking Dead, which I stopped watching for two years and then picked it up again just out of the blue and became completely addicted to. So they're not on my list. But this is my list. Um, okay, at number 10, I have Suits. Uh, that made a return to my list after me dropping it for a couple of seasons. It just had a very strong first half of its fourth season. Uh, at number 9, another show that returned was Homeland. Um, I loved season one and then really hated, um, started hating that show and it was really all about Brody and when they finally got rid of that character, I just felt the show has really come back so strongly. So that's at number nine. Number eight is Shark Tank. Um, I have two, two reality shows on my list because I do like a little bit of reality from time to time and Shark Tank is just required viewing in my household. We love it. Another set, another seven is Survivor, but I'm talking more about Survivor Kagayan, which was the um, brains versus beauty versus brawn season. That was just a high point of that show, 
best season probably ever, um, and you know, much better than the season that just uh, finished a couple of days ago. Um, at number six, I have House of Cards. I really hate it when people put that show down and say that it's not good enough or that it's a pretender. I think it's brilliant. I think it's cinematic and it's sweeping and it's epic in its scope and if the performances are just unreal. Love that show. Um, at number five, I have Game of Thrones. Um, I'm happy that Ralph has that on his list too because a lot of people thought that the last season was weak and I didn't. I thought it was amazing. Um, at number four... Uh, sorry, oh, is Veep. Um, that just impressed me with every episode and made me laugh. You know, sometimes made me laugh so hard that I had tears in my eyes. I just thought it was just just transcendent, really, really fantastic show. Um, and number three, I have Fargo. Um, I, I totally agree that that was probably just a work of art, really. That's the best way to put it. That episode... Um, where they have a shootout in the snow was one of the best things I've ever seen on the cinema screen or even on TV. Um, and number two, obviously, I have The Good Wife. It's not my number one. Uh, I love The Good Wife so much. Every time I watch that, I, I always say out loud, this is just the best thing I've seen on TV. I love it. I just think it's so well written and so well performed. But obviously, that leaves Hannibal as my number one because I can't imagine anything being better than that to me on TV. That truly felt like I was watching art. And um, I was so just incredibly amazed at how beautiful, like uh, aesthetically beautiful that show was. And, and I give Daniel credit for, for getting me onto that show because I was very, very against watching it. I'm a, I'm a Silence of the Lambs guru. I love that. I've read it many, many times and I've seen it over and over again. It's my favourite film of all time and I just refuse to get into that. But I remember Daniel saying, you've really got to watch it. I trusted his judgement and I and I just watched the whole two um, seasons in, within the span of like three weeks and binged it like never before and um, now I'm watching it again because I just, I really just love it. So that's my list. My face is in shock because Good Wife is not number one. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's close. It's a close call. It really could be my number one, but um, you know, again, because we're looking at half of seasons, and that first half of the last season, where you know, hitting the fan, that's when the show became went onto another level. And then, obviously, this year we dealt with the death of Will Gardner, which is when the show hit another peak. But then it it came back for season six, and we've got the storyline about Alicia running for office and that has just given it like another breath of fresh air and it's truly the best thing on broadcast TV along with Hannibal but when I had to put them against each other I just I just really really love Hannibal I probably just a tiny bit more so yeah they're really really close though yeah. It's interesting to note uh, uh, Homeland is something I sort of agree on. It's not on my list, but uh, you know, I found myself. Why I've had problems with it, even when everyone loved it in season one. I I never bought the sort of Brody uh, Carrie relationship, so that always felt like it was hurting the show. And now that he's out of the way, uh, it feels like the show has just become a really tight, well-made. A well-paced spy thriller in in just in just a much purer way. Uh, this like this feels like a, a a really good season of 24 without the filler, and that, that's that's what I feel about this season. It's my favorite season of Homeland so far. Yeah, absolutely agreed. So uh, yeah, okay. Well, shall we move on to drum roll, Daniel's list, which I'm expecting, you know, all kinds of weird and wonderful things. We love to make fun of Daniel. We, you know, we love it. But yeah, go ahead. Give us your top ten. Daniel. Well, I mean, you, you won't have too much to make fun of. Uh, there, it, I was surprised there's very little overlap between your three lists and mine, but there is some very significant overlap in, in other places. But uh, like, a, like a few of you, I, I'd like to start with a few of my honorable mentions. Um, you know, shows that I love that I just couldn't fit. The Americans is not on my list, but I loved it this year. Fargo is not quite on my list, but it was probably like 11 or 12. Um, I, I fell a little behind on Masters of Sex, so I'm only halfway through that, uh, that second season, but on the basis of what I've seen so far, that would be certainly one of the best shows of the year. Uh, Normal Heart also isn't quite on my list. Uh, uh, Looking, Louis, Walking Dead, all shows that I absolutely admired. Not quite there, uh, but 
uh, without further ado, my top ten list. Uh, number ten is South Park, which I thought uh, really rose to new heights this season by embracing continuity in a way that it never has before and telling sort of having continuous arcs that were really kind of inventive. Uh, number nine is also on Comedy Central. It's Key and Peel, which I think is one of the smartest shows and, and deals with uh, uh, not, not only is it funny and, and it does it deal with pop culture, but also deals with race in a really sly way that, that you know, it's not always uh, front and center, but it's always sort of an undercurrent of it. Number eight is the Dearly Departed Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, which uh, was innovative and unique to the very last day. So, I mean, just, just one of the most, one, and the most unsung, I think, of the, of the late night shows. Number seven is, was, on, was on Charlie's uh, runners-up list, uh, uh, Bob's Burgers, which I think is the, you know, it, it, I, I think it might be the best family sitcom on television. It's so warm and so odd, so uh, 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 touching and, 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 and unusual. I, I look forward to that show more than most these days. Uh, number six was the return to form, thanks to Dan Harmon, of Community. Uh, uh, I don't know if this was my favorite season of Community, but I think it was one of my favorite seasons of comedy this year. Uh, number five, Inside Amy Schumer, which, uh, like I said, with Key and Peele dealing with uh, race in a very sly way, I think Inside Amy Schumer just tackles feminism in such a perfect, uh, 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 funny, witty, intelligent, fearsome way. Uh, number four is a show that I don't know if any of you watch, uh, but Rob, I, I introduced you to Hannibal, so if you haven't watched this one yet, get started, is Rectify, number four, on the Sundance channel about uh, a man who has been, was wrongly convicted and has been released from death row. I think that show is a, just, oh, it's just one of the most beautifully shot and acted and, and directed uh, uh, pieces on TV. Number three, I'm surprised I'm, I seem to be the only one who has this on my list. Uh, last week tonight with uh, John Oliver, uh, which I think has sort of, you know, I mean, The Daily Show is still a great show, but I feel like last week tonight has sort of taken that formula and improved it and, and really married it to this incredible journalism. Uh, number two uh, is Cosmos. The, the the science miniseries, which which just felt like such a meditative experience to me. In addition to being informative, it was so breathtaking to look at and to listen to. And number one, Hannibal. Uh, it's 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 beautiful. It's it's stunning. It's gory. It's disgusting. It's hilarious. It's it's macabre, and all, it's all these elements that should not work together or be welcome together on any show. And and they just they just work so perfectly on Hannibal. So that's my list. That's my ten. Uh, I'm I'm right, and and you're all wrong. So that was nice to. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great list, Daniel. You obviously really love um, Comedy Central, and you that's, you've got a lot of shows from that network on your list. And you um, like Charlie also appreciate animation. It's something that I don't get into. I don't like animation that much. Uh, I have a black soul. Um, you know, as in a black hole, black interstellar, and um, and also I noticed that you do like the late night stuff a bit, and we all watch a bit of late night or variety. We like if we're talking about Emmy categories. The only one that I ever really ever loved is Real Time, which is not on my list this year. But I'm gonna watch John Oliver now. I think you convinced me that even though I don't really like him that much, he kind of irritates me. I I caught it one night, and I was just I couldn't stop watching him. He was just having like a he was having a tirade about something and I was totally like fist pumping like yes you are so right and I think there is something about him he's really intelligent and he does hit raw nerves so and, and you're an intelligent guy so obviously you are you like that, the journalistic side of the show and that's what you just said so I think I'm going to give that one a go as well yeah, and, and you don't even have to watch full episodes to start. I mean, all of those YouTube clips of those 11, 12, 13-minute investigative reports that he does with comedy, is, uh, they're all on YouTube, and they have all got, like, millions of hits. So uh, you get started there, and that's, you know, and you'll be hooked. i got to say, I mean, though I probably only watched one of the shows that you mentioned, which is Hannibal, <laughs> on that list, I really like that you have such a variety of, like, for... Um, variety shows and, and of, of late night and of um, animated as well because it's something that I mean and then I, I compare it to my list and mine is pretty 
standard, uh, you know, anything that's that's like a drama or a comedy that isn't kind of out there. So I appreciate that that on your list is just, um, uh, and, and I love that you have Hannibal number one. I'm glad that was a huge save for the rest of your nine that I just. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, again, I, I have to uh, reiterate, I don't think any of you watch it, but everybody pick up Rectify, like, immediately. Yeah, the first really, season yeah. was just six episodes. If you like the first six episodes, you'll like the second season, so just give okay. it. And I've just been meaning to do it. It's got, obviously, the lead of that is, is Australian, so I know about it, and it's, sometimes it's in our media here, and, you know, and it was, when it was picked up, I thought, okay, so it's not a one-heat wonder. And I've been meaning to watch it. There's something holding me back about it. And it was probably because it just seems like it's going to be really meditative and slow. But I will give it a go. I'm going to do it. All right. You know, so. um, I, I, you know, uh, listening to all your lists, I was kind of trying to figure out what we didn't have on there. And we, I mean, uh, in none of our four lists did we have stuff like. Uh, the Affair, which just got nominated for a Golden Globe, or yeah. Transparent, which got nominated. I had it at number ten. Oh, you did? I'm sorry. Yeah, I That's haven't seen Transparent yet. Well, I'm, I'm hoping to see that soon. But and True Detective, none of us seem to be really into yeah. that. That I think True Detective was seriously overrated. I mean, I loved watching it. It was really interesting to watch, and you know, I, I enjoyed it. But I just thought it was so overrated. And so derivative, and it didn't deserve to be on any list as far as I was concerned. Yeah, Chief was never a threat for my list. I, you know, I, I yeah. liked it well enough. I really liked the interplay between Matthew McConaughey and, yeah. and Woody Harrelson, and their performances were good. But the mystery didn't go anywhere. You know, when they solved it, it just sort of was solved out of nowhere. Um, you know, I, I, I wasn't a big fan of those rambling kind of philosophical speeches mm -hmm. by Matthew McConaughey. I thought those were kind of you know, all talk and no actual substance. Uh, you know, so it, you know, it it was a show that I watched, and I'm like, oh, this is a this is a decent show. And then I watched the rest of uh, you know the media just explode over it. Uh, I, I it didn't it didn't resonate that same way with me. And yeah. then we had like two seasons of American Horror Story, the Coven one, and then the one that's going on right now. And neither of us mentioned them. I mean, they would it would probably be number one on Marcus's list both seasons. So that's mm -hmm. what we're missing here. But it, that's kind of, it, I mean, did we also, besides uh, me with Jane the Virgin, did we have any shows that were new this fall? Did you guys have any on your Very list? Very good that question. No, and I checked that because I went back to my Cadet Awards. To, that's my, like, I use that as my guide. What would, what would be my top ten? And then I looked at the new season to see, is there anything that I would add to that? And there wasn't. There just wasn't anything from this fall that really hit a nerve with me. Why is that? Was it just a dud season so far? Um, I don't know. It's you know. I mean, there are a couple of shows that I like, uh, you know, but I, I feel like I, I haven't seen their full potential yet. It's like you know, we talked a little bit about the affair earlier. That wasn't on my list, but I, it's a show I like a lot, and I think it's growing. And the season's not over yet, and and it's a very, it's one of those shows that has. Uh, it's actually ending tomorrow night. The season uh, mm -hmm. it has. It, it, it's it's this serialized show where I feel like maybe after episode ten. It'll wrap up and it'll wrap up this season's storyline in a way that will oh you know that will sort of encapsulate everything. I think that's probably the best of the fall dramas that I can think of. And then the best for me, the fall comedies, is is another show that's I, th I think that's all potential but isn't 100% there, which is Blackish on ABC. Uh, but yeah, there, there's not much really. There's no new masterpiece on on this fall yet. I don't think. Mm. Yeah, I um I was considering uh, marry me, uh for my uh for my list oh, because yeah. That's not too I uh, I loved it. I think David Caspi has a wonderful writing style, and even if the plot's not completely engrossing, uh just the the, the dialogue and the way the characters, because he has these great set of actors he usually works with, these the, the way the characters will interact with each other, that'll be funny in itself, and you're just willing to go with it. Yeah, I and mean, the pilot was very strong. Well, shall we move on to our performances? Otherwise, we'll be here till Christmas, literally, because uh, that's only a few days away. Um, yeah. How much uh, well, can we just... Sorry, our, uh, our, our two favorite shows, apparently, were Fargo and Hannibal, because we, uh, three of us had them on each of our, each of our lists. Yeah. So I think that's, that's a the pretty uh, good list. goals consensus. And I think um, awards voters need to start taking more notice of Hannibal. A lot of these shows that we've listed are you know, very much in the awards discussion. Hannibal is not... Not even for things like cinematography. 
which is just disgusting. It really, really annoys me, and um, I don't know why that is. It's it's probably going to it'll probably never ever make it um, into the awards discussion. So we just need to keep championing it as one of the best ones. But let's rattle off our performances, shall we? Just give the five men and the five women, and then we'll just talk about them. Um, do you want to do it that way? Um, sure. Uh, uh, so so men and women uh, all at once, uh, and and let's uh, let's start with uh, again uh, Charles. Let, let, let's hear your five men and five. Women. Okay. Um... All right, let me see here. Uh, let's see. A number for my men, number five, uh, Lawrence Fishburne, who has uh, had two uh, uh, pretty g- great performances this year when, with uh, Blackish and with Hannibal. Uh, number four, I have uh, number four, I have Jimmy Fallon. Now, I'm not the biggest Jimmy Fallon fan, but it, it's undeniable that he has actually put a stamp on the on the Tonight Show. And has really made this his own, and so I gotta give I gotta give credit to him uh, where credit's due. Uh, number three, Kevin Spacey with House of Cards. Uh, number two, Stephen Colbert with everything that he has done, and plus that finale is still fresh in my head, and I thought it was fantastic. And number one, Martin Freeman. Wow, and great list. As for the ladies, um. I, I hear that's what the kids are calling them these days. Uh, <laughs> number five, number five, Casey Wilson uh, for "Marry Me." Number four, Uzo Aduba, "Orange Is the New Black." Number three, Allison Janney for "Masters of Sex" and um, uh, "Mom." Uh, number two, Juliana Margulies for "The Good Wife," and number one, Julia Louis Dreyfus, who continues to be the queen of television on Veep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anybody, we'll, just, we'll just move on, and then we'll talk about them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anything to say? It's like, please be gone. With no, I, I, I like that. I didn't. I thought we were all rambling. I, I really like that you included Casey Wilson in there. I think she's great yeah. in Marry Me, and I think she deserved an Emmy for. Uh, I, I mean, I think she's deserved an Emmy for a very long time. But as Penny, I mean, on Happy you know, Ender, she was magnificent. Yeah, I mean, it was just, it was just great. I, I'm, I'm glad she added it in there. I, I wish I would have thought of that. And, yeah, so. yeah. I, I mean, I mean, I'm still bitter about the cancellation of Happy Endings, and oh, yeah. uh, Marry Me is, you know, a little trinket of, you know, of, and it's good in its own right, but it's just that little trinket of, it's like, remember this great show used to be on TV, though there's no, yeah. uh, my spirit animal in Max is not on there, so you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Of course. Sad. Well. Um, yeah, and I really I, I agree with some of those what that you just mentioned. And I don't have Martin Freeman on my list, and I wish I kind of did now. He really just was so wonderful in Fargo, and even also on Sherlock, which I don't I didn't see the last season. So there you go. The Fargo uh, anyway. was the one that blew me away. I mean, I yeah. I the the complete uh, arc of his performance on that show. Uh, I was just uh, I was mesmerized by that. I always liked him, but this took it to a whole new level. Yeah. Right. So, um, okay. Shall we have, uh, uh, Ralph's uh, list of, of five men and five women. Uzo, 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 and Uzo. Go for it, Ralph. <clears throat> okay. I didn't. I didn't rank mine. Um. So I'm just gonna list off five guys, and you guys can pick whatever order you want to put them in because they're all interchangeable to me. Um. I have Woody Harrelson for True Detective. Uh. Kevin Spacey for House of Cards. I have Jeremy Allen White for Shameless. Martin Freeman for Fargo. And Zach Woods for Silicon Valley. Oh God, how could I forget Zach good Woods? List. Yeah, so, very good. These list. are my five guys. Five ladies. I I had to go with six. I just couldn't pick. I'm sure you guys could uh, would not be shocked by the first five, but uh, <laughs> I'll start with six. Um, oh wait, I didn't rank them. But anyway, Eden Share from the middle. I think she's amazing, and I think she's deserved Emmy consideration and an Emmy on her mantle for many many years. Yeah. The other ones are pretty transparent uh, for me. Um, Allison Tolman for Fargo. Mm-hmm. Um, Uzu Aduba for Orange is the New Black. Gina Rodriguez for Jane the Virgin, which you all have to start watching. Yeah. Um, Emmy Rossum for Shameless. Mm-hmm. And all eight Tatiana Maslany's for Orphan Black. Yeah, big list. Thirteen performances on that list. You're so greedy, so so greedy. <laughs> I just but gotta say, 
I got to say, God, I forgot. I can't believe I forgot about Zach Woods, and he is. Uh, you know, I love the ensemble on uh, Silicon Valley, but his character and the approach that he takes to Jared, who the character that's not even his real name, <laughs> is just yeah. it's so wonderful, and it's actually kind of. It's kind of heartwarming but pathetic at the same time, and he strikes every chord of it just perfectly. So, uh, totally kudos, agree. kudos to you for putting him on that list. Yeah, and um, I, yeah, I totally agree with that. And I um, yeah, I'm not surprised by your list, and I don't have Tatiana Maslany because I dropped Orphan Black like a bad habit um, halfway <laughs> through season two, and I don't um, blame you. It was tough. Yeah. It's tough to watch, and as much as I really love her and all of her characters, and she really is the best actress on TV. Just given what she does, um, I just you know I think your list is a pretty good one. It's very strong. It's hard to uh, you know you know I had problems with uh, the second season of Orphan Black too. Uh, you know it, it did it did seem to go not totally off the rails. I don't you know off the rails indicates that it's it's over. It can't be salvaged. I think there's you know it's it, it just went a little awry. I think they can. I think they can write the ship in season three, uh, but yeah, they 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 could have done better for her, but she could not have done any better for for the show. She was, you know, she she's great. She's not on my list, but uh, uh, she would certainly be welcome on my list. Well, I'll put her on there because <laughs> she deserves to be. <laughs> All right. Rob, uh, how about uh, your your five men? How about me? Okay, so I'm also a little little greedy. Um, I have six women and five men. I, I could have named twenty of each, but obviously, you know, we have to narrow them down. So my blokes are um, Matt Bomer. I, I know I'm on the record as saying I didn't like the, the normal heart. I didn't like it. It didn't it just didn't really speak to me, and I just thought it was a bit over the top, too Ryan Murphy ish. Um, but he, Matt Bomer, was just incredible, and he should have won the Emmy. Uh, I also have Zach Woods on my list. Um, he elevated Silicon Valley to another level and loved him so much on that show. Josh Charles, obviously, my boyfriend, um, love him. Uh, lo- miss him on the show, but he did. He just did so, he just was so wonderful on The Good Life, and he really went out in a blaze of glory, and I hate that cliche, but he did. Um, Rick Hoffman on Suits, that's more of a fringe player. A lot of people aren't aware of him or the show, but if you ever watch it, and especially the finale, or the mid-season finale, I wrote about him for Gold Derby recently, and he really blew me away. It's a character that I never liked, and now I just think that he is just amazing. And uh, finally, I have Pedro Pascal from uh, Game of Thrones. I just thought he was the best actor or actress on that show, period. And um, I'm really disappointed he didn't get his Emmy nomination that he really deserved. And when he's, his character was killed, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, and if you have, haven't, too bad. Um, that, was, that was really quite amazing. Um, my women, um, I have Amy Schumer. Uh, I just love, love everything she does. And <clears throat> she's just so funny. Um, Uzo Aduba, uh, that goes without saying as far as I'm concerned. She is the best thing on um, Orange is the New Black, along with Kate Mulgrew, who I've always loved, big fan of hers, and um, think that she does a wonderful job on Orange is the New Black. Um, Julia Louis-Dreyfus is the queen of television. That goes without saying as well. And she's just she's just something else. I just love her and think she's so good on Veep. Uh, Alison Tolman was the highlight for me of Fargo, and a revelation, really. I can't wait to see more of her. She's just really, really interesting, an interesting person to watch. And finally, um, even though all I've just said, all those platitudes, really, let's be honest, the, the, the best actress on TV is Juliana Margulies. She really pulls that show together so perfectly. She's the best leader. She's the best leading lady. She is, she just really, really elevates the already brilliant writing to something that is almost poetic when she does it. I, I can't put into words how much I respect her and really, really admire her, especially for the last half season and last half of the previous season um, that we saw in 2014. There you go. I like that you mentioned um, Pedro Pascal for Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is not a show that I've ever loved. It's always a show that I've liked, but you know, I, I, I can't follow 
who's going where, who's hiking where to, you know, <laughs> yeah. to it's like, okay, I'll just, I'll assume it, <laughs> some, the Pedro Pascal role this season was the most interesting part of the season. And I was kind of miffed when they offed his character, uh, just because I felt like, okay, well, you know, I had Tyrion. Tyrion was, has always been, you know, one of the best characters on the show. But then you had uh, Pedro Pascal come, and it's like, oh, goody. And, oh, oh. Totally 100%. With all these other people. <laughs> He's gone. So I was, I was sad to see him go. And he did deserve an Emmy nomination. I think he was the best performance of the season for me from Game of Thrones. Uh, but, yeah, that was, uh, you know, that was disappointing when, when uh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's damn, not just damn. that it was the sound when that happened and it's, yeah it's that like just really did there and it's like ah ouch no that's a headache yeah yeah okay Boy. uh one interesting thing that i think uh, uh none of us had on there and i think uh one that you know, if everybody's doing six of someone, I want to add a sixth lady to my list. I want to put Lorraine Toussaint on there from Orange is the New Black. She was magnificent. She, um, was. she was just absolutely uh, wonderful. And I, uh, whether she goes, whether she's in the guest actress category or the uh, supporting actress category, I want her to get a nomination and hopefully win because I thought she was so incredibly conniving in her in this role. It was wonderful. All right, shall we? Shall we? Let's move on to Daniel's list, and then we'll wrap it up. All right. Um, well, you know, it, it's really hard because when you're when you're talking about TV and 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 comedies, dramas, movies, miniseries, variety, and all that sort of stuff, lead actors, guest actors, it's it's really apples and oranges in in a such a way. So I have, you know, there are a lot of people who are on your list who I think are absolutely amazing, at least as good as the ones on my list, but. Uh, you know, these are the ones that struck the most personal chord with me from either week to week or in one uh, individual performance. So my five men, and I too cheated, I chose six. Um, uh, Matt Bomer in The Normal Heart. Uh, and then I have a tie between Stephen Colbert and Craig Ferguson, who just left their late night shows this week. And it would be tragic for television to lose one of them, but both of them in the span of two days was just crushing TV. TV sucks a tiny little bit more now <laughs> than it did on Thursday uh, uh, without them now. Then I have Martin Freeman on Fargo, uh, just a revelatory performance, uh, uh, com something completely different we've never seen from him and just mesmerizing throughout. Uh, and then I have uh, Mads Mikkelsen in Hannibal, mm -hmm who I think did, had the unenviable task of, of trying to follow Anthony Hopkins, and I think he sort of pulled a Heath Ledger at this point, where I think he's sort of, he's, he's, he's almost the definitive Hannibal Lecter for me at this point. I think Agreed. I'd have her surpassed uh, Anthony Hopkins by now. And then uh, the last one on my list of men is, uh, uh, I mentioned Rectify in my top ten list, uh, and I'm going to cite Aiden Young, the lead actor from that show, uh, the the you know it's such an internal performance in many ways, but it's so rich and 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 dark and and intense. There there are some dialogue scenes, there are some speeches, there are some. It's just it's just incredible what he does with this role. So yes, once again, everybody watch that show. Uh, and now onto my list of women. I have some slightly odder choices potentially here, or, or less uh, expected choices. I have Gillian Anderson in Hannibal. Uh, uh, again, this was a performance unlike anything I have seen from her before, and, and, and an odd performance. It must have been you know, kind of a leap of faith for her to do this, and I believe she's coming back in season three as a regular, which is one of yeah. the pieces of news I could have imagined. It's so haunting and, and calculating, and uh, it, every, every time she's on screen on that show, she's just fantastic. Uh, then I've got Viola Davis in How to Get Away with Murder which I don't think is the best show on television. I don't think it's, you know, I think the supporting cast needs to step up their game because, yeah. you know, I mean, she's been one of my favorite actresses forever, for, for like 10 years or so. I've, I've loved her since long before The Help and, and you know, she started making waves. Uh, and this is, is such a great showcase for her. And then I've got Melissa McBride for The Walking Dead. 
uh, you know, she took a character who seemed like almost an afterthought for most of the three or four seasons of the show, and she became the heart of the show, the, you know, not necessarily the, the, the sympathetic heart of the show, because it's a very dark turn she took over the last season, but she has become the, the character study on that show that I think is the most outstanding. Uh, and next up on my list is probably the strangest. It's Kristen Schaal for Bob's Burgers, who, her Louise Belcher is the best voice acting performance. For me, my favorite on TV right now. That, that character is just outstanding. Uh, and then uh, I have uh, also Amy Schumer uh, for Inside Amy Schumer. I, th I think you know she's she's hands down the the best uh, comic actress on television at the moment. No offense to Julie Louis Dreyfus, uh, but uh, I think Amy Schumer has has a claim to that for me at least. Great list. Um, you know I'm going to have to watch Bob Bur Bob's Burgers too now. Too many of you are telling me that it's so, such such a good show. I'm going to have to just put aside my bias against animation and watch it. And I love Kristen Schaal. I didn't even know she was on that. So now I've got to watch it. There she is. The, uh, she is. the youngest daughter, uh, Louise Belcher. You can't miss her. She has the ears, and she sounds exactly right. like Kristen Schaal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's so funny. It's it, it's sort of like imagine uh, you know she's she's the youngest daughter you know sort of imagine Cartman with a soul like you know she she's not <laughs> but she she's got that kind of you know edgy you know you know quality selfishness. Selfishness, you know, conniving in certain ways, but it's 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 lovable at the same time, and you, mm -hmm. you just can't you can't root against her. It's it's I, I love her. It's it's that subtract all the my uh, the anti-Semiticness, the, the uh, anti-Semite from Cartman. You know, you subtract all of that and all the racism, and then you get and then you get Louise, and she is she nice. is wonderful. As is as is the whole cast on that show. They really have a great chemistry with each other. And even though, because you can't see them, but you can hear it just in the dialogue, because you know sometimes they're improvising. And like you know, Kristen Shaw with um, uh, Eugene Merman, they're both great together. Uh, John Benjamin and John Roberts, um, who play Bob and Louis, and not Louise, uh, uh, Linda. Uh, th they have a great chemistry with each other. It's really, it's really something to something to listen to and and to watch too. Mm -hmm. I gotta say, I really like your shout out for uh, for Jillian Anderson. I think that's great. Um, yeah. If I had more room, I, I'm sure she would make my, my top ten. I, th I think she's awesome in, in Hannibal and um, probably my favorite performance from her. But then again, X Files was her best known, and it's sci-fi, so you know that I did not watch <laughs> that show at all. So I have nothing to compare it to other than that. But it's no. a great, great, he great question. Even oh, not watching the X Files. Oh God, never. Yeah, I'm never. A total hate. Well, could have but skipped such a like four of her. Watched like the first two or three of the X Files. It's prime. That's it. That's all you need to worry about. <laughs> I mean, I was. I'm such a massive fan of hers. She's probably my favorite TV actress of all time, and I, I've I've been lucky enough to interview her twice. And the, my first interview with her was my best interview that I've ever done, and I've probably done hundreds of them, a hundred of them by now. She's so good, and I was going to put her on the list, but I thought that I loved her so much because I just like Gillian Anderson. But so many people have cited her performance um, from Hannibal, so it's, it can't just be my bias. There's something about her character and the way she portrays her that really draws you in. She's fantastic. It's a really, really good citation there. I totally agree. And, and um, it's sort of like similar to you know her and Martin Freeman for me are, are, are two actors that I, I like uh, and and I, I'm with you I, I've been a huge Gillian Anderson fanboy ever since the X Files uh, so I wasn't sure if it was my bias but seeing these two actors go to a place that's completely different from anything I've seen from them and they, and it never feels like gimmickry it never feels like you know just like you know manners you know it's it it, it feels like just natural portrayals but it's something so unique that we've never ever seen them do before. Yeah. Yeah, it was a, it was a great mention. Um, but uh, it seems like our favorite actor is Martin Freeman and actress is Uzo Aduba going by just off the list. And cool. it was nice knowing all four of you, or three of you, there's four of us, um, but none of us had Jessica Lang on there, so we're effed with Tom. <laughs> we're totally ruined. We're all replaced. Yeah. <laughs> You're fired. Yeah. I like Jessica Lange just fine. I, you know, I, I, I missed Coven. I watched um, I watched Asylum, which was outstanding. Yeah, uh, I agree. 
Freak Show Now, which isn't isn't quite as good, and and her character isn't quite as good. Uh, it's not as as consistent, I don't think, uh, in terms of the writing, also, uh, for for this particular role. Uh, but yeah, it's it, it's good work. It's just not it's just not one of the ones that st- stood out for me this year. Mm. So I'm sorry to anyone who who hates us for not loving oh, well. Jessica Lange this year. Uh, <laughs> we still love her. Uh, just yeah, just make cool. it this year on these lists. No. Right, right. I, I'm still kind of reeling though from from Rob's, uh, I guess, uh, poetic love letter to uh, Julietta Margulies's being the best uh, actress on I stand television. By. I stand by. <laughs> I, I know you do. I know you do. It's uh, it's just shocking to me because there are so many better people like Emmy Rossum that are oh, God, yeah. appreciated on there. <laughs> but that's okay. We can agree to disagree. That's the beauty of subjective lists, you know. Um, I don't I agree don't, with that. I think <laughs> I, I, I think shame. I can't can't watch shameless. I've tried and tried and tried, and it just makes unfortunately just a, okay. I'm not going to be rude. It, it's, not, it's not my cup of tea. Let's leave it at that. But I don't I don't dismiss Emmy Rossum. I mean, she's excellent, and as is William H Macy. But um, I just am amazed that Juliana Margulies has. To, she really has to carry a show, and she does it just so wonderfully, and um, I hate being such a fanboy for that show, but, you know, I'm just, we're all talking from the heart today, that's, we get to do this finally, we're not talking about <laughs> Emmys or Golden Globes, we're talking right. about what we love, and we all have very good taste, you know, the nobody m- made, a, made a choice that I would find sh- a stupid thing to say, it's all good stuff, no one is saying that, you know, the best show on TV is Here Comes Honey Boo Boo, so, right. <laughs> we're all good. So basically, Rob hates poor people, but he loves rich <laughs> lawyers. <laughs> hates anything blue collar, but any if you're a lawyer on television and you're rich, that's that's Rob's. Or rich, or rich everything serial, killer. rich serial killers are better serial. than. <laughs> that's exactly what Rob said verbatim. I heard it. Pretty <laughs> much, yeah. A serial killer is good. Guys, did you hear about? Bad. Do you hear about Rob and how he loves rich serial killers? It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's questionable. No, I, I think you guys had all, all great choices, and it really gives you something to think about. Um, of you know, like I'm definitely gonna go watch Rectify now, even though it sounds sci-fi. I'm gonna go. Give no, it a shot. no, 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 not re- it's not sci-fi. It's at like all. okay. It comes out of prison, and then yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of shows that I wrote down that you guys mentioned that I maybe haven't given too much of a chance to, or that I'm gonna look at uh, yeah. once again. So it's great to do this. Mm-hmm. Though now that I think of it, I should have snuck some sci-fi in there just to sort of Trojan horse you. It's like, oh, I really yeah. like this show. And then the first laser gun comes out, and you're like, damn it, I like a sci-fi show. <laughs> and I you hate know Daniel. What? Damn it. There's no, there's, I don't think there's very, there's a lot of good sci-fi on TV at the moment, which is really disappointing. I couldn't, I always try to include sci-fi. It's my favorite genre, but there's really, there's, there's genre stuff that is close to sci-fi, fantasy, whatever, but... There's no really good sci-fi. I miss Battlestar Galactica and things like that. Sci- sci-fi channel, whatever you want to call it, Sithy, or I don't know how you, how you say it, but it just doesn't have anything good, really, really good yet. And I'm hoping that its new batch of shows will improve, but so far, not totally impressed with the sci-fi offerings. If you've got any good mentions, Daniel, now's the time. Um, well, I don't have any at the moment. I think Sci-Fi did sort of after Battlestar Galactica, and then they tried Caprica, which I loved, but hardly anyone else watched. Um, you know, they sort of turned into sort of the USA network for, but for Sci-Fi, it was sort of lighthearted kind of procedural right. dramas. Uh, and and I think they've made they're making a concerted effort to sort of try and find another Battlestar Galactica now. Uh, so fingers crossed for the spring then, because uh, that that could be exciting on Sci-Fi potentially. Yeah, bring back Mystery right. Science Theater three thousand. <laughs> that was a good one. All right, are we are we uh, should we wrap up then, guys? I think that was, that was all really good stuff. Anyone anyone watching this who hasn't seen some of the things we've mentioned, you you know this is spend the Christmas break, you know, the a few days that you might have off over Christmas to um to maybe binge a few of these because. We, you know, this is this is the beauty of TV. There's so much, there's just so much volume of really, really good stuff to watch and enjoy. So yeah. Yeah, and and I, I think that's a great note to end on. Uh, if there is anything that you watched that we missed, uh, uh, I'm sure you're the internet. You will let us know. Uh, if there's <laughs> anything that we love that you think is awful, uh, this is the internet. You will especially let us know that. Uh, so. <laughs> So, uh, 
Let, let's we're leave. Gonna get, we're going to get a one star rating for this video. We're <laughs> all one stars. Yeah, and we trust yeah. you'll do it, and we trust you'll let us know tastefully. Yes, oh, of course. Yes, because YouTube will, you know, is is reliable for that sort of thing. Uh, uh, so I, you know, I will just we'll leave it at that. Uh, that was our take on the best uh, television of 2014, and you know, much of it is ongoing. So we'll be talking plenty more in the spring about uh, the best television when we gear up for the Emmys next year. Uh, so hopefully this was a good primer, and you know the the Television Academy gets on top of a lot of these shows that we mentioned and beat the rush when the spring comes. All right, uh, thanks for watching.